House Republicans have only three weeks from the day they get back into session from the holiday break to put together and execute a plan to force Democrats to surrender on the open border. This will be, by any definition, the most difficult task House Republicans have had in modern history. They are now operating with a two-seat majority, soon to be a one-seat majority. So they have to break Democrats. They have to channel all of the frustration and rage and anger the American people feel over the border cataclysm, and they have to direct that against the opposition of congressional Democrats to any form of tangible board security. Here, in my opinion is, how, opinion, is how you do that. Every single day you come back in, you vote on a different element of board security. Hour after hour, through the day, through the night, through the weekend, and you expose, vote by vote by vote, how extreme, how radical, how insane, how deluded and dangerous the Democrats have become in their open borders obsession. And then, by the time you reach and you've informed the whole country, you've laid bare just how out of control the Democrat Party has become as you reach the beginning of February, then you push through the bill that shuts down the mass migration crisis, and then you draw that line, and you hold that line, and whatever happens next, happens next. But at least you will be remembered by history, by your children and their children, as having stepped up and done what the republic needs of you in this hour of greatest need. And you don't think that the republicans will be remembered for the party that shut down government? They will be remembered not just now, but they'll be remembered for generations to come if they make this stand of having realized that Joe Biden's open border is the end of our republic. Absolutely. Our republic cannot survive with this pace and this scale Folks, and this speed. Folks, this should be listened to and followed through on. We need to stop the border crossing. Will be ripped apart and not repaired. If we want a country. You're feeling it firsthand in Arizona. Tell us what you're saying. Oh, it's, uh, I was just in the airport the other day, and it looks like a refugee encampment. I'm, I'm not kidding. There's that many people who are here illegally in the airports right now. They've got their Ziploc baggie full of papers, their brand new phone, gift card with a little cash on it, and they're heading to a city near you. This is the largest human smuggling operation I think we've ever seen in history. And our U.S. government, our tax dollars are funding Are paying for it. Why we're it. broke. We need to get our Republicans together, and we can't lose a single vote. And we need to Republicans the and Republican conservative Democrats. And let these people Democrats know, so with a message, brain. We're not going to take this invasion at our border any longer. The people are counting. They're counting on the House of Representatives to do the right thing. They're counting on Washington, D.C., the Republicans, to do the right thing. I don't believe we can count on the Democrats to do the right thing. They're the ones who, who have facilitated this. They're the ones, like my opponent, Ruben Gallego, who's voted numerous times against the wall. I mean, for goodness sakes, Joe Biden, we had $300 million of materials to build the wall, ready to go. It would have taken just a few weeks, and he stopped that whole process and basically gave that material away for pennies on the dollar. The American people are desperate for help. Do you think, Terry, this is resonating with people, though? There is a real opportunity for the Republicans to take the majority in the Senate. You are running for that seat in Arizona. Is this the issue that is going to turn that? I think it is the issue. I think it's been the issue. I think the, Republic or the Republicans and a lot of the politicians are now just finally catching up. The American people have been watching this, horrified, seeing the video. And Absolutely. Last week, we saw a bunch of politicians go down and take a look at the problem on the border as if they haven't known how bad it is. Have they not been seeing the same videos we're seeing? Glad they did it, but I'd rather them back in D.C. getting to work, like Stephen said, immediately, working every single day, every single minute of the day to stop this invasion. It's you know, taxing our hospitals. It's taxing our social services. Our schools are going to be busting at the seams, and it's going to be hurting our children trying to learn. The American people, the poor and middle class American people, are the ones struggling the most with this. Yeah, and, and Stephen, President Trump came out with a whole list of uh, items on his list of rigged and stolen election 
back on 20 for 2020 very few people want to go back and investigate what 2020 looked like and what happened here my question to you is what are the republicans doing now to ensure that the 2024 presidential election is fair and free well that is the most important question isn't it and all i can say to you on that is that i hope that every state republican party every republican official all the way up from the very top down to the bottom of the party is investing seriously in the legal resources that will be needed to file challenges in real time as any state in every state is manipulating, violating, breaking, bending, bruising, damaging, or simply ignoring election laws and rules. At the same time, it's essential that Republicans in states that have completely stacked courts, completely stacked legal systems, the legislature and the governor's mansion are hopeless. They also need to develop world-class ballot harvesting operations, understanding, understanding that there is going to always be an enormous amount of cheating and fraud in a system where there's no ID checks, no citizenship verification, no domiciliary verification, no meaningful verification of any kind on anything. So you have to do both of those things, and I am confident that people realize now that if they don't do those things, that you're going to continue to see the kinds of horror shows that we've seen with election manipulation in the past. Wow. Uh, President Trump writes about mail-in ballots. He write, writes about Zuckerbucks in swing states. Same question for you, Karen. Well, I would caution that we start looking at the money we're pouring into these NGOs that are processing um, all of these people pouring across illegally across our border. Because I noticed when I saw some of the names of these NGOs, many of them were also the same NGOs that take part in that ballot harvesting. So how do we know the money is really going to process these people? Frankly, the money should be going to building the wall and stopping people from coming over. But this is just an awful lot of money being poured in by Democrats to the NGOs and these organizations to process people coming across illegally. And we know that they're going to, in some states, get these people signed up to vote. That's illegal. It's going to happen. So we have a, a perfect storm kind of starting up right now. The Democrats realize they can't win with their dead-end disastrous policies. The American people don't want it. They can't win. They can't beat President Trump, so they're trying to tie him up in court. They're up to uh, the highest level of shenanigans I've ever seen as we go into this election. Well, and the people have to start demanding more of their elected officials. Absolutely. To do and, and Stephen, the rumor is, is that the Democrats are going to pull Michelle Obama out of the hat during their Democrat convention this summer. Boy, I made that mistake one well, time no with Obama. She shamefully. When they are incapacitated by a frail, we don't need another ultra-liberal communist. Joe Biden. But what we do know is that we are witnessing election interference now in real time on two fronts. They're trying to imprison, bankrupt, and destroy Donald Trump using the awesome power of the state like something out of a failed third world country. Wow. And they're leaving our border wide open to, to import a new generation of voters that they believe will be more favorable to big government and top-down control. That's their plan. And so I will tell you what is happening yeah. on the border every single day is one of the greatest crimes in human history. And Joe Biden and the entire Biden administration are guilty of leading an insurrection on the southern border against the law, Absolutely. constitution, and sovereignty That's the, the only United insurrection that there is day. going on. We are tracking it every day, and we will continue to do so. Thank you so much for being here, both of you, Arizona Senate candidate Perry Lake and former White House senior advisor Stephen Miller. Thank you so much. Quick break, and now it is in the hands of the Supreme Court. The highs in Trump's appeal to Democrat-led Colorado, banning the 45th president from the state's ballot. With oral arguments set to begin on February 8th, as a former CIA analyst warns of potential election interference from the intelligence community this November. Former Director of National Intelligence, John Ratcliffe, who has exposed both domestic and foreign election interference right here on this program with analysis when we come back. State of States ballots. Georgetown's law professor and Fox News contributor Jonathan Turley sounds the alarm. Writing in the New York Post, it's not just Trump. Democrats are moving to bar Republicans from ballots nationwide. Joining me right now with more on all of this is the man who first warned of potential election interference this November on this program, former Director of National Intelligence, John Ratcliffe. John, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for being here. You bet. I want to get your take on the intelligence community interfering in the election and these prosecutors. First off, take on Jack Smith, 
The last time we spoke about the special counsel, you said he had a Mueller moment. Uh, I did. So, Maria, you know, we expect uh, foreign adversaries like China to interfere in our elections. Uh, but what we don't expect and what we should never tolerate is for our own government, for our own agencies and own entities within our republic to interfere in elections. And that's exactly what is happening on a number of fronts. You mentioned the intelligence community and that analyst, and we've talked about that a, a great deal, about how the politicization uh, has come into play. But here, leading into 2024, uh, there's a couple of things that are happening. One is an effort to uh, keep Donald Trump off of the ballot, and you mentioned what's taking place in Colorado and Maine and, and blue states and the officials there. But then there's also uh, the effort to keep Donald Trump off the campaign trail, and that's what Jack Smith is doing in what I think is just a nakedly political and partisan uh, prosecution. The, 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 the Department of Justice uh, expressly says that a prosecutor may never take actions, the timing of which would put a political candidate at an advantage or a disadvantage. Uh, that's election interference, and yet that's exactly what Jack Smith is doing. Maria, what people don't understand that is Jack Smith pushes for a trial date in Washington, D.C. in March, and then another one in Florida in May, is that a federal defendant must, by law, attend every day of his trial. So essentially, even if Donald Trump is not kept off the ballot, he can be kept off the campaign trail for the entire summer by Joe Biden's uh, Justice Department. And it just, uh, it just reeks of uh, you know, political partisanship, especially, Maria, when you consider the fact that the, the, the only reason to do this is, is, uh, is relating to the election in November. Yeah. This is the same Justice Department, this is the same Justice Department that said six years is plenty fast to bring charges against um, Hunter Biden. And another, you know, it's now been a year since the prosecutor uh, uh, investigating Joe Biden and he's done absolutely nothing. But yeah. Jack Smith says this has got to move forward now. It's a good point, and we put up the protection of government integrity from the justice.gov website showing federal prosecutors and agents may never select the timing of any action, which it appears is what Jack Smith is doing. Stay right there, John Moore with former DNI, John Ratcliffe, right after this. And join me this Tuesday on a Fox Guest Tuesday on Fox Business. Join us on Mornings with Maria. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm back with the former director of National Intelligence, John Ratcliffe. And John, you've talked a lot about election interference, both foreign as well as domestic. We've talked about Jack Smith. I want to get your take on how the Supreme Court is going to rule on this immunity case. But also there's China. China, you say, uh, did uh, meddle in the 2020 election and will do it in 2024. Yeah, they very clearly did. The <clears throat> intelligence community has assessed that and said that they will intensify. And one of the concerns that we have is they'll do the same things they did before. But, Maria, there's been a 1,000% increase in the number of Chinese nationals coming across our border. 5,000 uh, were caught just in the month of, of November. 85% of those are single men of military age. So the real question there is what percentage of those are here on PLA or PRC orders to intensify, as the IC says, efforts right. to interfere in the election? Um, Good point. With respect to, to, yeah, with respect to uh, what's happening with Colorado, look, Jack Smith, who's the most aggressive prosecutor, as I talked about, even he couldn't bring charges for insurrection against Donald Trump. So f when a federal grand jury passes on it, but the state of Colorado or Maine or anyone else says, we're going to come up with our own process, make our own determination, that's why the Supreme Court took this up and why the Supreme Court will strike it down. All right. We're going to be watching that. This is important. John, good to see you. John Ratcliffe joining us. Thank you so much. That is with Frost, the Sunday Morning Futures. I'll see you tomorrow on Fox Business. Stay with us right here. Morning.